God, are y'all in here? That thy days might be long. Praise God today for every mother. Amen. I'm grateful to see many of you who haven't seen Lakeisha and Phil. God bless y'all. Good to see Brother Robinson today and many others who are here on today. Good to have the mother of our own, Reverend Moore, here today sharing with us. Amen. Amen. Others who have not been here, Brother Burns, it's good to see you and Brother Terry and his new wife. Amen. That's good. The Lord really is. Amen. Happy to see my mother. Mary Smith. The only mother I ever knew. So I honor her on today. Praise God for all mothers. Amen. Turning your thoughts today briefly, the book of 2 Timothy, right after the book of 1 Timothy, shall we stand for the reading of God's word. 2 Timothy, the second epistle of Paul the Apostle to Timothy. 2 Timothy, we're going to look at chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. Good to see my sister, Sister Rhonda Choice, today. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. Those of you that are sharing with us virtually today, just read with us 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. Verse 5 says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of sound mind and of love and of sound, uh, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. I want to use for a subject just for a few minutes this morning. You got it from your mom. You got it from your mom. You got it from your mom. There used to be a time, Sister Johnson, when our children were well behaved. But look at them now. Time out my foot. I wonder, I wonder, Sister Bay, I wonder if anybody is here other than me. Is there anybody here that's been called downstairs from upstairs or from the back of the house to the front of the house? Ina, to get the remote control. Is there anybody, Sister Bolden, here that was called from outside just to change the TV channel? Yeah. I mean, anybody been called uh, from the back from the backyard and just fix her a glass of ice water? Mr. Irving, I wonder, is there anybody besides me that's ever been hit with an extension cord? A switch. Modern day kids don't know what a switch is. A, a, a race car track for the wheel. I mean, maybe it wasn't a switch, maybe it wasn't that, maybe it wasn't a belt, but it might have been the nearest shoe. Yeah. As it's played. Wait, 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 wait. Some of us, Therese, had to pick our own switch off the tree. And 
then if it was too small, she would send you back. Oh, y'all didn't grow up like I did. Where, where, those, where, where y'all ghetto folks? The hood folks, Tyler, you know. <laughs> Have you ever been burned on your ear with a straight call? I, 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 well, I know that never happened to me. Some of the have that story. They had, they had their perms, you know. But have you ever been uh, hit in the head with knuckles or with a comb or with a brush? I think it's Mother's Day, y'all. Well, okay, maybe that didn't happen to you. Have you ever been told to shut up before I give you. <laughs> I remember, I remember getting hit uh, with the belt, and, and they would pronounce every syllable as they hit you. They would they not tell you. Okay, I, okay. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Uh, I, I remember, I remember ponytails and plaits being so tight that they had little bumps around the scalp. And, uh, I mean, okay, Reverend Clark, I don't know about you, but the people at the school office, you know, the principal, the secretary, and all them, they was afraid of her when she got there. And, and, and I don't know about you, but we were afraid to go home with a bad report card. Times have changed, Sister Dolores, but uh, alcohol, peroxide, cocoa butter, and Vaseline, that was all that was in the bathroom medicine cabinet. Now y'all got aloe bell arrow, what's that? And, 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 and in our house, we were never on punishment. You just got whoopings when you stepped out of the bathtub. <laughs> uh, I don't know about y'all, but I remember people would get pinched in for going to church, going to going to sleep in church. And we had to participate in every church activity. Anybody else had to participate? You was in the junior choir, you was on the usher board, you was in the Easter play, you was in the Christmas play. Now we give them choices. Uh, Brother Blakey, uh, anybody else? Uh, has she ever come uh, inside and picked you up from the school dance or your prom and she had rollers in her hair or maybe her gown was on under her coat? Okay, y'all don't know. Okay, maybe you remember this one. When, when you asked her for something, the first response you got was, you got a job? <laughs> yeah. All right. My grandma would, would whoop us uh, uh, for something somebody else did. And she would just say, I'm going to get everybody to make sure. <laughs> okay, okay, y'all didn't grow up like I did, but Lakeisha... They would vacuum every day, uh, every day. Uh, and if she didn't vacuum, she made you vacuum just so she could have lines in the car. Oh, okay, y'all know. You ever been told to turn off the TV, get off the phone, sit down because it's raining, a storm outside that God is talking? And it's crazy, you have your friends ever call the house phone and she just embarrassed you and tell your friends you can't talk and tell her why. <laughs> friends, brother Camden, family, and, uh, they would try to keep you out of trouble because they know your mama's crazy. <laughs> and, and nowadays, children are divorcing their parents. And they're calling 911. We didn't have a 911 to call. And you better not pick up her phone because they were possessive. It was, get out of my refrigerator. Get off of my couch. They let you know it was theirs. <laughs> and then I remember, uh, I remember, I remember hearing, uh, Lord, please don't let me hurt this child. <laughs> I never understood that prayer, but, but all I'm really saying is if you were blessed, uh, to be raised in a house with that kind of mother. Amen. You were blessed. Amen. Yeah, yeah. They taught us right from wrong. They didn't care what we thought it was about right from wrong. Some, someone has said 
The easiest part of being a mother is giving birth. The hard part is showing up every day. Amen. Amen. One woman asked, uh, if you had to do it all over again, would you have children? And I heard the answer come back, yes, I would, but not the same one. <laughs> He responded, uh, Minister Clark, by saying she got it from her mom. And so I thought today we would just talk about this real briefly. I'm not going to really preach today with just scattered remarks, but I want to tell us today that it's important that we pass down or pass something positive along uh, uh, to our children. I was only able uh, Brother Terry, to recall those thoughts that I gave you about growing up because uh, I remember how it was. But every parent ought to want to give your best to your children. And the best we can give them is a relationship with Jesus Christ. No, we didn't have a choice. Uh, Sister Coleman, if you live under this roof, you going to church when Sunday. Now you might stay out all night. Saturday night at the Lambert, but when Sunday came, you were going to. Church. We're gonna look at it this morning. I'm gonna look at it real quick. I don't have a lot of time, but uh, I want to look at the spiritual legacy that a mother leaves in the life of her children. The faith that continues to be branched by passing through her life into ours. And so, first of all, I would say to us as to see, a mother gives us a learned faith. Yeah. Look at verse 5. You think it's right there in your Bible unless you tear it out. It says, for I am mindful of the sincere faith within you. Y'all see it? Which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am sure that it is in you as well. So, Sister Melvin, in essence, Paul is telling Timothy, you got it from your mom. Uh, Paul states this fact because the godly influence on Timothy's life was not from his father, who was not a Christian man, but from a Christian mother and grandmother. And y'all hear me talk about my grandma often, and I mean, I'm proud that I was raised uh, by them. But Paul recognized a family trait in Timothy's life. So Rita, not in physical traits, but uh, a, a spiritual trait, spiritual maturity. In other words, a sincere faith was in his life that was also in his mother and his grandmother. So what I'm saying, Sister Bernice, is that it was passed down from mom and them. Are y'all in here today? But a sorry, sincere faith literally means a faith without wax, a faith that could be tested and proven to be real. Are y'all with me? More even than just words. But Timothy acquired this faith, Sister Williams, because he had seen it modeled during his life. It had, it had dwelt, uh, it had lived, it had taken up residence in his mother and his grandmother. He saw it every time he saw them. It affected everything they did, Sister Mixon. Uh, and it was evident in every move that they made. Somebody here today has that memory of your mother and your grandmother, but they were saved all the time. Are y'all in here? You saw it in them every time you saw them. They didn't change like some of us. So it bothers me, Sister Yolanda, that some people I got to get to know them every time I see them all over again. Uh uh. No, no, no. Grandma was the same every time you saw them. And so he didn't see them act out their faith, but he saw them live out their faith. 
And, and to me, that kind of faith, Reverend Johnson, is a contagious faith. I mean, real faith. Uh, uh, but secondly, our mothers give us a living faith. Uh, look at verse 6. I'm, I'm almost out of here. Uh, for this reason, he says, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, are y'all in here, but of power and love and discipline. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Lord, deliver me from undisciplined folks. You know, just go wild, do anything, say anything, and live any kind of way. I mean, I know ain't nobody here today like that, but they'll be here next Sunday. But Paul put some definition to sincere faith that Timothy and his family exhibited. A sincere faith is active faith. Are y'all with me? Uh, uh, Brother Fred, kindle afresh the gift of God. Is your gift uh, working today? Uh, is your gift working in the body of Christ? Uh, uh, a ministry which is an extension of the impact of others in your life. Y'all ain't feeling me today, so let me hurry up and get out of here. Paul's ministry, uh, 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 continuing through Timothy, are y'all in here? In other words, it was passed down. A sincere faith is a fearless faith. Pastor, are you sure we can do that? Are you sure we can do that? Sin Fear, faith. Faith and fear can't occupy the same space. Well, Pastor, I just don't know. I don't see it. You ain't supposed to see it. You walk by faith and not by God has not given us a spirit of fear, a spirit of being timid. Are y'all in here? A fearless means being willing to step out in obedience. Monica, when circumstances might be intimidating, fearless means you're willing to step out on faith. Uh, real Christianity uh, 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 can be quite scary. Ministry can be frightening. Uh, okay, y'all look like you don't believe me. Well, for some of y'all, tithing scares you to death. I knew I was get too much in my way. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna leave that alone because y'all don't like that kind of preaching. But, uh, okay, I, I, let me give you this one. Can I give you this one for free? Witnessing scares some people to death. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor wants to go knock on doors. I just rather serve in a food program because I don't want to go see. I don't want to tell nobody about it. I don't want to witness. That ain't my gift. Standing alone when the world around you is caving into immorality and people are doing all kinds of stuff. Standing alone takes real faith. Sincere faith demonstrates itself as life is lived out every day. Are y'all in here today? Come on, come on. Uh, of power and love and discipline. Three descriptions of, of life choices we face every day. I'm just teaching today. I ain't gonna preach this is a little lesson. But God's power or your weakness? What is it? Is it about his power or is it about your fear? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Sacrificial love or your self-centered lifestyle? It's all about you. Spiritually lazy living, flowing downstream like a dead fish with the world or making tough choices to and firm and do what God tells you to do. Y'all yeah. don't like this kind of preaching. Some people, uh, uh, Brother Tiny, are, 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 are living spiritually lazy. Floating downstream like dead fish with the world. In other words, when they in Rome, they just do as the Romans. When they're around worldly folk, they talk worldly talk. When they're around church folk, they talk church talk. Power, love, discipline, evidences of sincere faith. Living faith. 
Are y'all in here? And so let me close because y'all tired today and I'm going to get out of here and get the Mother's Day dinner. But our mothers give us a lasting faith. Therefore, the heart, verse 8 says, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. He says, or of me, his prisoner, but join rather with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. Paul sees Timothy's life. Uh, he sees it. Uh, he sees the requirements to answer the call to follow in the same path that he and the Lord have taken together. Paul understood clearly the cost of following Jesus, and he knew that if Timothy was going to make it, he needed a solid faith base. All I'm saying is, as I close, a person who does not have a sincere faith base is not really a candidate to be used very much by God. All right, some faith, some power. Little faith, little power. Much faith, much power. No wonder Jesus said, if any man will come after me. He must deny himself, take up his cross daily, take up his cross daily, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And so mothers demonstrate more than any other group on earth what it means uh, to give up your own rights for the life of somebody else. Sometimes being a mother is about making sacrifices and being a sacrifice for her family. Uh -huh. A Christian mother is honored by God. Sister Ruby, uh, a Christian mother is esteemed by God, well regarded and respected by God, treasured by God, valued by God, precious to God, cherished by God, and even revered by God. And so if you're a child today and you've been disrespectful to your mama and she's a Christian, I feel sorry for you. Oh, you miss it. I'm going to say it again. If you are a child and mama is saved and you've been disrespectful, you better watch yourself. What mother gives to her children is more precious than silver and gold. Come on, come on. More valuable than money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but mama will tell her daughter when it comes to choosing her best friend, don't choose diamonds, but choose Jesus. Yeah. She will tell her son, any man, any boy can't make a baby, but it takes a man. Y'all ain't saying that. A real mother will tell her son it takes a man to be a dad. The heart of her husband, the Bible says, doth trust her. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. The scripture says, strength and honor are her clothing. So she shall rejoice in time to come. The record is uh, she opens her mouth with wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. And then her tongue is the law of kindness. I'm talking about mama, y'all. Uh, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord So I got to leave y'all with this, but whoever, whatever mama is, yes. always revere your mother. Yes. Mother may be dead and gone, but you ought to be grateful for your mother. Yes. 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 As I close today, if you're able to call mama on the phone, you are blessed. 
If you're able to come by and visit, you are blessed. Amen. Those of you that can't call mama, you know I'm right about it. You woke up today wishing that you could call your mama. Yes. 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 Never forget the legacy of your mama. And that's all I got. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Stand all over the place. Yeah,